Hi there, Japan fans. Today's show, we're going to talk about persuasion for speakers. Present or Master Shimasho. This is the seventh year of the Presentation Japan Series podcast, and we are beaming around the world to you from sunny Minato Ku in Tokyo. And I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, Dale Kani Tokyo franchise owner, the president of Dale Kani Tokyo Training, and three time best selling author of Japan Sales Mastery, which is Zaegyo in Japanese, Japan Business Mastery, and Japan Presentations Mastery, plus. Stop wasting money on training, which in Japanese is training de okane o muda ni suru no wa yamimashō, and all are available on Amazon. Through this podcast, I want to help you to become a better speaker to be one, clear, two, confident, three, persuasive, and four, highly influential with those around you. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast with your family, friends, and colleagues. We are not being sponsored by Libsyn, but we value your privacy, which is why we have our podcasts hosted by Libsyn. Unlike many other hosting organizations, Libsyn have a strict policy that does not allow access to your private information by anyone. Here is our daily podcast lineup on Apple Podcasts Mondays, the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show podcast. Tuesday, the Presentations Japan series. And every second Tuesday, the Business Touches in No Oshie Show. Wednesday, the Sales Japan series. Thursdays, the Leadership Japan series. And every second Thursday, the Business Pro Podcast or Show. Fridays, the Japan Business Mastery Show. Saturdays, Japan's top business interviews. Now, this is episode number 318, 318. Today, we're talking about six points of persuasion for speakers. As speakers, we have a tremendous amount of things to concentrate on when presenting. Is my speaking speed of the right cadence? Am I being clear with what I'm saying? Are the audience able to follow the navigation of my slide deck? Am I losing attention to the wiles of the mobile phone as people escape from me to the internet? We can all have a lot of considerations buzzing around inside our brains. These considerations are all directed to ourselves. A delivery of the message to the audience can get lost in all of this mental effort and consideration. Let's assume the fundamentals have been completed. The audience analysis has clarified at what complexity level we should deliver our talk. We've planned a blockbuster opening to seize the audience's attention away from all of the competing distractions for our message. We are providing evidence and proof to back up what we are saying in this disgruntled, newly cynical world of fake news phobia. We have cleverly designed two closers, one for after the main body of the talk and the other for after the last of the inquiries in the Q&A. We want to dominate proceedings and ensure we control the last thing the audience hears rather than the content of some random offering, which is totally off topic. Most importantly, we have not spent the majority of our preparation time jostling one slide with another to build the deck. Rather... We've been rehearsing our talk to ensure we have it within the time limit and that we have the right structure and flow for the presentation. We have pre-prepared possible answers for the most likely questions we can anticipate so that we are never caught off guard. With all this in the bag, we are ready to rumble with the delivery. Many technically oriented speakers believe that delivery is trumped by the high value of their content. They have written themselves a get-out-of-jail card for this component to excuse their lack of skills in this area. 
Delusion reigns. If you're droning on in a monotone, saying, um, uh, every five seconds, and generally demonstrating no enthusiasm whatsoever for your topic, then, no matter how brilliant the content, many in the audience will simply escape to the internet to get away from you. Here are six points of persuasion for your delivery, which will ensure the audience stay their hands and don't lunge for their phones as soon as you start speaking. To help us recall all of them, we will move from head to toe as a simple memory trick so that we don't forget them. Eyes. Eye contact is powerful and totally underused by most speakers. If you fear your audience, making eye contact with them is terrifying. If you have followed the fundamentals outlined earlier, your fear will diminish and you can get on with the business of engaging your listeners. Our rule is six by six. We want to look deep into the eyes of our audience members one by one and hold their direct gaze for around six seconds. Less than that and there is a rather not much engagement, little engagement going on there. More than that and it becomes intrusive. Here is a little trick. In a big audience, when you select one person in the crowd to engage with at a certain distance, the 20 people sitting around them all believe you are looking at them. It is also hard to look at two objects simultaneously. So focus on just one eye of the audience member and talk directly to them for six seconds. Mentally divide the audience into a baseball diamond so that you have inner and outer fields, left, center, and right fields. This gives us six sectors to engage with at random to make sure we are covering the entire venue and not favoring those closest to us rather than those at the rear or those on our left side over those on the right. Find out more. We come back from the break. Today's show is brought to you by our public courses, but we also are doing custom in-house programs. We do them in both Japanese and English. We do them in our super safe classroom and live online. On the 7th of December, we will be having our Dale Carnegie course. Brilliant program, much recommended. This is a program that's been going for more than 100 years for a very simple reason. It works. It is very, very hard to get change in people. Well, people love change, but not for themselves. They want you to change. They want the boss to change. They want the company system to change. They want politics to change. They want society to change. Everybody else to change but them. So how do you get people to change? It's very hard. This program, though, does work on mindset. It does shift people's thinking. It does see them change. Very, very, very important course to be able to do that. On the 12th of December, we're doing our Leadership Training for Managers program. This is the entire toolbox, everything in there you'll ever need for leading. Everything you need is in there. That's on the 12th of December. On the 19th of December, High impact presentations, not mama impact, not so so impact, not low impact, high impact presentations, which means when you present, it has tremendous resonance, tremendous impact with the audience. People remember it, people remember you, people think about you in a positive way, people remember that you did a great job, people see you as a professional, people see you as skilled, people see you as an expert, people see you as someone they want to do business with. Two days in the main modules, two instructors, everything videoed, one-on-one -on -one coaching from beginning to end. Unbelievable program. If you have not done this program in your professional career, you have to change that and come and do it. It's a phenomenal program. Definitely high-impact presentations must be one of your core building blocks of your career. Go to our website at wwwdale hyphen carnegie.co.jp that's www.dale-carnegie.co.jp 
C-A-R-N-E-G-I-E dot C-O dot J-P. Lots and lots of value there for you. To do better in Japan, email me at greg.story at dalecarnegie.com. If you like learning by watching video, then we have nearly 2,000 there for you at Tokyo Japan Dale Carnegie TV on YouTube. Welcome back. Let's talk about next part down, which is face. The slide deck mustn't dominate that most powerful illuminator of ideas, our facial expressions. However, many speakers have one facial expression throughout, regardless of the content of what they are saying. We want to perfectly match what we are saying with how we are saying it. If it is good news, look happy. If it is bad news, look serious. If it is puzzling, look curious, etc. Professor Albert Morabian's research showed that when we are incongruent between content and delivery, our audience becomes distracted from our message. Next one is voice. Voice modulation provides contrast and variety, which are important elements to keep our listeners with us until the very end. An audible, conspiratorial whisper is just as powerful as a message communicator, as a stentorian outburst. All loud or all soft are the attention decimators we need to avoid. Mix it up and go for variety. Gestures. Holding the same hand position for longer than 15 seconds saps all the power from it and just becomes annoying. The faucet idea of turn it on, turn it off is the right metaphor for how we should be thinking about gestures. Combining gestures with our eye contact, facial expression and voice power can really project our words and phrases into the minds of our audience. Pauses. We need small breaks to allow our audience to digest what we've said, rather than snowballing them with the next offering until they cannot remember what we said five minutes ago. Pauses help us to control our delivery speed too, so that we are not rushing through the content. Stance. Standing with our weight split 50-50 across our legs always looks professional. Don't slouch. Stand up tall and straight. These six delivery reminders will ensure your message is received clearly. We go to so much effort to prepare our talks and so much stress to deliver them. It will be a total waste if our message is not getting through. Did you get value from today's show? If you did, then share the love around with your family, friends and colleagues. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast. Until the next episode, go out there and apply the learnings from today and become a presentations legend amongst your circle. Thank you for joining me and please tune in next week. Remember, I'm in your corner, committed to your success here in Nippon. <laughs>